little bit during practice, um, whatever day that was. Yeah. Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, everything good there with yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, no, as far as I know, um, you know, and that, that would always probably be more. Sean's got a little bit more information on that, but yeah, as far as I know, he, you know, he just went in and got stretched out, you know, and everything, and then came back out and, and looked good. He, he felt really good throwing it that day and everything. So yeah, no, no worries there. Even with that, has there been anything you've had to manage? I know, like he said, he just needed time the off season mm -hmm. for his elbows. Is there anything mm -hmm. you've had to do differently during camp just to be like, okay, we're all good or? No, well, I think, um, you know, as, as guys go, you know, and they're longer and longer in their career, um, you know, a lot of times it's like, okay, I could just pick up a ball and start winging it 50 yards on my first throw. And it's like, you want to make sure, you know, to manage guys kind of as they go throughout their career and make sure, you know, you're, you're doing the right things from a practice standpoint to, to build guys up in terms of throwing, to make sure when you're going, you know, routes on air, that we're, the first throw isn't just a downfield route to, to build those things up. So, um, there's definitely some management things that, that you want to do as a coach, you know, to make sure that uh, um, you're not putting anything, you know, on those guys that that's going to be uh, detrimental. So I think that's that's just the biggest thing, especially as as guys grow in their career and uh, get a little bit older and, and, and all that. Has that been weird for him as he gets older? Like we already talked about having to manage him from the run standpoint. Now that there's like more body parts to think about is that something that like you have to really have a conversation with him about or is it no like, i mean like... no i think you know he's still he's still at a point in his career where he's not you know eight nine ten years or whatever down the road so i think right now where he's at you know he's he's in a great spot um you know and still still feels you know really good with with where he's at you know so um, it's, it's really not something that I, I don't think, you know, you, you necessarily have to worry about with him. Um, but, you know, you just try to make sure you're doing the right thing, not only for him, but the receivers and everybody involved. Hey, Kevin, on uh, stuff like this at this stage of his career, when do you want him to get out of camp? And what is, is he accomplished now? Uh, I mean, Steph's come in and, and he's done a great job, you know. And, and really at this point, you know, it's just it's, it's building the foundation with the new guys that, that are now here of – you know what uh, what he's all about, and and because he really kind of, from a practice standpoint, and, and being out here every day emulates what what you want your guys to be about. You know, he, he comes out every single rep, you know, works hard, and, you know, wants to be in every single rep, and and um, you know, so I think he really lays a lays a foundation for for that room in terms of work ethic, um, you know, in terms of the energy that he brings and and everything. So. Um, he's done a tremendous job with all that. You know, he, he's really come in and, and uh, just really picked up and, and continued to um, be, a, be a huge part of, of this offense. How are you going to approach the starters when it comes to preseason games? Um, and what is your preference or philosophy on That's more of a Sean question, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll let him address that. And, you know, whoever, however that, that unfolds, then you go out and we call the game and, and we try to, you know, uh, every game we, we go into, we're looking to, you know, grow as an offense, especially in the preseason. Can you give us kind of a two weeks in thoughts on shorter, mm -hmm. where he's come from, maybe from the spring yeah. to now? It looks like he's making some nice progress. Could you kind of evaluate a little bit of what he's done? No, yeah, and I think, you know, a lot, for a lot of guys, especially when they're new to, their, new to the system, there's that um, kind of – you know, scale that goes because, you know, you, you really got a good grasp of offense, you got a good feel, but then all of a sudden, especially in camp, you know, things just start adding up, adding up, you know, from a mental standpoint, you know, and all of a sudden you got the whole playbook in and then in call it periods where you're just pulling from everything, sometimes, you know, you swim a little bit, you know, and um, so, you know, he's done a really good job uh, learning things, um, you know, and then now I think, you know, he, he's reached that point where it's starting to become more like he knows it so now he could just go out and play a little bit more and he's not thinking as much and I think that's really where you can start seeing growth from players is is once they know it to the point where they don't have to think about okay what do I got and how am I running this route it's just boom you hear the call and you just go get lined up and you're attacking the defense the more you could grow because the more you start working on some craft type things and the less you're thinking about just offense type well, stuff. Metal, metal point, I guess. Mm -hmm. Physical yeah, Have okay. Seen, no, yeah, you definitely, yeah, no, I think, you know, he's growing physically. I think, um, you know, again, and, and that's part of it is just now he's, he's to the point where he can go out and just physically start, you know, um, physically start playing, you know, and, and flying around a little bit more. And you're seeing that from him. You know, you're you're seeing him play faster. You're seeing him play to his size more. 
um, you know, and, and play physical. And, and that's that's what we want to see from him. We just want to see him continue to grow, play fast, play physical. Um, you know, and, and, and I think you really are starting to see that uh, throughout camp, and he's just starting to pop a little bit more and more. How would you assess things at right guard between Ryan Bates and Osiris Torrance? No, I think, uh, I think it's, it's been a great competition there, you know, and uh, between those two guys, they, they really – um, bring a lot of different things to the table, obviously, you know, so I think it's it's one of those things where it's still still a great competition and and you know, we're still kind of evaluating that. Um, and right now I would say it's a, uh, you know, really close between those two guys, which is they're two really good players. You so you need to see more of Osiris because Ryan has the reps mm -hmm. as a starter. And so maybe when we're watching and observing practice, is there maybe more of a concerted effort to throw him in the water? Because yeah. that's where you need to do no, I think at times you definitely want to see him, as, you know, especially, you know, throw, going in with the ones and, and those types of scenarios. And, um, you know, we'll see it. We'll, we'll, we'll have a good look at him in these preseason games as well. So I think you really want to, yes, evaluate, you know, especially somebody new uh, to the offense. But at the same time, you don't want to shortchange Ryan because a lot of times the, the competition is what, you know, can fuel guys to, to really surpass what they have been in the past. So, and I think uh, um, Ryan's doing a great job. And then you throw in a guy like David Edwards as well. Um, you know, he's he's obviously a, a you know a great piece to that puzzle as well. So. And you mentioned shorter mm -hmm. playing without really thinking, mm -hmm. starting to grasp it. How have you seen Osiris? That, that no, area. yeah, and I think uh, that's that's a huge part of being you know especially a rookie. And Osiris is, uh, you know, I think getting more and more to that point. And I'll tell you what, he did a great job in the off season. You know, after uh, mini camps, between mini camps and, and training camp, because he came back and he knew more when he came back than he did when he left. You know, and so I think that's just a testament to the the studying and the work he put in in those weeks, you know, he was away from us. So that's the exciting part about him is, you know, there's there's something inside him that wants this. You know, he wants to be a good football player and he wants, uh, you know, to, to be out there and help us, us help us win football games. And I think that's the exciting part about him as well. Ken, uh, in terms of, I know it's Sean's decision on how much guys play, but the league has changed over the last, especially the last few years, about how much starters play in the preseason and all. And overall, how much does that change what you need to see and get done on the practice field that teams used to see more mm -hmm. in a preseason or several preseason games. Yeah, no, and I think that's where, you know, when times has really kind of evolved to where now you have a lot more probably unscripted periods than maybe you had in the past, you know, and of, of a lot more, hey, you know, we'll just call it and move the ball and, you know, offense versus defense and that type of thing. So I think that's where really you see that little bit of evolution in practice a lot because, you know, a lot of times before, you know, when I played and, and early in my career, everything was scripted unless it was like two minute, you know, or something like that. So um, I think that's really where you see the evolution of, of the game is allowing these guys to just go out and, and just play the game almost in practice where you can be in a little bit more of a controlled environment, um, you know, and, and you're taking less risks with guys. So with that in mind, Coach, how much can, you know, maybe players on the back end of the depth chart really Yeah. Maybe the perception that coaches might have from the practice field based on what they can do in the preseason. No, and I think I think that's obviously a huge part of the evaluation process, you know. And and look, what what guys, you know, hopefully they understand when they're coming in, you evaluate everything on these guys. You know, it's like whether it's you know live periods in practice or whether it's a, a walkthrough tempo period. You know, it's like guys have to show because those walkthroughs, you know, it's just there at times there's just not enough practice reps so those walkthroughs really become integral parts of you know of what you need to get done in order you know in order to grow as an offense and especially when you start talking about game weeks and things like that you know so uh during training camp guys have to show like even in even in a walkthrough that you know they can learn and and do the right things because those are just as important as you know as anything else during the season you know but yeah, to your to your point in, in games, you know, uh, when those when those starters and ones don't necessarily aren't out there, hopefully that means there's more time, you know, for those other guys to really show what they can do, whether it's making this team or, or other teams throughout the league. How much has Kincaid gained their trust? So and Josh's trust so far, and how much how how eager are you to see what he does 
should he play in this yeah, I think, you know, Dolan's really done a great job coming and working, you know, and, and I think when, when guys come to, come in and, and work and, and um, show they can do the right things mentally and physically, you know, it, it's going to earn trust. But, you know, I think it's there's still a, a growing process and we're, uh, you know, still continue to grow. And, and um, you know, the, the, the great part about him, hopefully, is that, you know, we've got a lot of other guys on the roster that can, can help us, you know, so... Um, you know, all the pressure doesn't have to be on on one guy. Hopefully, in in our system, and and hopefully that allows him to continue to grow as a as a football player the right way. Because you know, it's he's a young young player in this league, and and you know, it's 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 one of those things where um, he'll continue to grow kind of as his career goes on, and hopefully, guys can help him with that. I mean, whether it's Dolan or anybody else, it's it's a uh, you know assignment and execution, you know, and I think that's that's always going to be a, a big part of, of offensive football, you know, and and so yeah, it's just when he's out there, it's uh, you know, is are are we doing the right things? Is he is he using the right technique? And look, I mean, uh, the guys on the other side are pretty good too, so there's going to be times where you know somebody gets beat, whether it's a lineman or a, a tight end or a receiver losing a one on one, you know, a rep on that, whatever it is. But you know that those things happen. It's how do we come back from that? How do we, you know, how how's that next play? Does the last play affect the next play? You know, and all those things. And and those are things you want to see from your guys. What did what you learn last year in how someone who has the return responsibilities, how that affects how you feel you can utilize them on the offense? No, it's a great question. I think, uh, you know, it's it's it definitely affects that first play call. You know, it's uh, is it a. Uh, you know, is it a long return where that guy's gassed and, you know, you got to change that call or is it a fair catch and you could stay with that call? You know, is that, uh, does he pop a long run, you know, long return and then all of a sudden, you know, you're in a different area of the field you expected and now you're just, so there's there's a lot that goes into that, that's for sure. And, um, uh, you know, it's just the ability to be flexible and, and um, you know, just kind of see kind of how things unfold a little bit. But you always want somebody back there as, a, as an offensive play caller that is dynamic, that gives you an opportunity to hopefully flip the field and, and do those things. So, hey, if, uh, if one of our, our guys is, is back there returning and, and pops a big one and uh, we can't use them the next play, I'm all for it. And so. that's the only way it really hinders it. Game plan wise, you don't feel, all right, they have these responsibilities, punt, kick, return, I, I maybe can't have them in mind for a certain amount of targets. Or yeah, and I think as a as a returner, it's probably a little bit different than if he's like a four-core phase guy that's that's running down on, on kickoffs and on, you know, punt and punt return. You know what I mean? So I think um, those guys who are, are more like four-core four phases than the return guys, I think the return guys, if, you know, however you use them on offense is, you know, how you're going to use them uh, just as long as they're, physically able to do so after the return. With Deontay, what, stood, what stood out to you about Trent Sherfield? What does he add to the receivers? Uh, a lot, I mean, to be honest with you. I think he's uh, he's been a great addition for us from a mental standpoint. He's done a tremendous job coming in and, and picking up the system and, and, and learning things. And, um, you know, when we're out there, even when the offense is piling up, you know, he knows what to do. He's switching between positions, so that flexibility and then just as his playmaking ability, he's got great speed and he's got some uh, some really good route running ability, whether it's inside or outside in the slot where he's been in the past. So really excited about him and what he's bringing to the table for us. When you look at Deontay and Khalil and that combination there maybe in the slot, how do you view them and how much do you feel like you need one person in the slot to get those consistent reps? Or is it something where you've learned over the course of your time that you can use multiple guys? Yeah, no, I think... Uh, that's a great question. I think, you know, that there's the ability to use multiple guys, you know, at times based off of potentially what you're trying to get done in there. Um, you know, but I think obviously on, on some routes that you want a certain guy in there, you know, for the rep standpoint. So, um, you know, I think that's that's one of those where we're going to kind of see how things unfold throughout the rest of camp here between between that competition. But the great thing about both those guys is they do have ability to go outside. So if one guy kind of turns into that primary inside guy, you still have the ability to take, you know, the one of the others and put him outside and, and still be able to help your offense and, and do some things out there. Hey, Ken, uh, what stage does Buffalo everything be in if you start streamlining the mm -hmm. 
No, yeah, and I, I would say right now we're probably at about 90% or so of the offense is in. You know, we try to get everything in as early as possible, um, you know, and, and really kind of put the pressure on guys early, um, you know, to, to, to learn stuff. And, and that way things match up through OTAs and mini camps as they do in training camp. So now they're kind of learning the bulk of your offense multiple times, you know, and, and so then when you get into the season, they've, they've learned it, you know, in phase two, then they learned it in you know the OTA mini camp phase, and then they learned it again in the training camp phase. So you really try to uh, uh, pile the bulk of your offense in early on because it, it ties together with OTAs and mini camps. So that said, how I know you have to evaluate each individual player as you go forward here. How much of maybe putting them in a certain spot on Saturday is important? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you'll call. And you'll have a formula. I want to see this guy in this situation. Yeah. Versus basically making sure that everybody just knows the offense, kind of. No, no, I, and I think that's a big part of what the preseason games are about. You want to take a look at guys, but in my experience though too, it's like okay, we're gonna call this play to get this guy the ball, then all of a sudden it goes somewhere else. <laughs> you know, so uh, you know, at the end of the day, what I've realized, you know, especially through last year, um, the the best way to call a game is to call it you know and and let you know let the ball go where it goes you know and i think that's that's something you never want to lose sight of as a play caller is is um you know the 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 second you start thinking okay, i gotta get i gotta get this guy the ball and you know this many touches and and all that it's like that's when you know it, it's it, you, you handcuff yourself and you handcuff you know the offense a little bit so i think when we're at our best is what we're calling it you have faith in in you know guys getting open making the right decision making the throw based off of what the defense does and you know because there is only one ball and unfortunately you know whether it's preseason or or during the season you know you like to think we've got a lot of playmakers on this team but you know there is only one football so you know it's just it's hopefully it finds the right spots all good all right thank you guys